Hey Brownie Bites, welcome to A Bite of Brownie Sunday. It's our goal in these videos to help you experience the extravagant love of God through our eyes. If you're enjoying these videos and our story, please consider subscribing. Today we're going to talk about the deployment and separation phase of our relationship. Whenever I was still in the Air Force, our relationship was still blooming. We've already talked to you about the first date, link up here. Our first date was phenomenal. Fireworks, things are going like crazy. We're beginning to date. and We have a two week period where we fall madly, deeply, crazy in love Quick. with one another. Quick. I think we told each other <laughs> that we loved each other and like on like the second date. We and we just, oh, head over heels, head over heels for one another. The only trouble with that was, if you recall, we didn't want to see one another early on because I was getting ready to deploy. And the deployment date was two weeks away. So we had two weeks of absolute bliss but deployment came i at the time had like serious separation anxiety and so i was having a really hard time <laughs> that. um letting him go into a dangerous situation the weekend before he deployed i went to abilene to say goodbye to him yeah and that was the hardest thing ever that was the hardest part of the deployment for me was the saying goodbye i had fallen further in love than I ever thought possible. And to have to say goodbye to that person for four months, she didn't know. She didn't know what she was getting into. I'd been deployed before. It's not pleasant, especially if, if you want to be home whenever you're away. And four months of absolute torture being away from this person. I remember we were saying goodbye, you know, hugging, kissing, saying goodbye, I'll, I'll see you later. And it's just not like I'll see you at the end of this weekend. I'll see you months down the road. I hope you're still here, kind of a thing. And in her mind, it was, I hope you're still alive. Right before we're leaving, when we're saying our goodbyes, we're hugging each other, we're kissing each other, it was the hardest thing in the world to get up to the deployment charter. So a plane comes in to charter your troops overseas and you have to be there like five, six hours early so that they can check all of your stuff. And if you're a lower ranking guy, which I was, I think I was a staff sergeant at the time, if you're a lower ranking guy, you have to be there pretty early so that you can get checked out. The upper ranking guys can come in a little bit later, closer to takeoff time because they don't have to worry about them so much. There's fewer of them. I spent so much time, so much time saying goodbye to her, saying, no, I don't want to leave. I even thought about turning around. That would have been terrible, AWOL or something. I thought about turning around and going back home and being like, forget this thing, I'm with you. But I showed up so late. I showed up with the officers. I showed up with the lieutenant colonels to say, here are my bags, guys. <laughs> I'm ready to get on the plane. I got to say, if there wasn't a fear of retaliation through like security forces or detainment or imprisonment uh, or being kicked out from the Air Force, I probably would have stayed. It was pretty rough. We did not want to leave, leave each other. I was just terrified that something bad was going to happen to him. And this man that I'd fallen so deeply in love with so quickly would be gone. And that was one thing that I had to constantly pray about whenever worry would creep in and I would start freaking out about him because yeah. he would go on missions for two weeks at a time and he wouldn't be near a phone or a computer and I wouldn't hear from him. So I would just be torturing myself with these thoughts that weren't from God and I had to pray a lot to get through it. And I felt like God told me that he would be coming home and I was like, so far into it, I'm like in a in a casket or like home alive. Gosh. <laughs> it was so bad, oh right? Gosh. <laughs> Jeez. God really laid on my heart that Jared would be coming home to be with me again, alive. And so I really had Gave to me. hold on to that truth when dark thoughts would start coming in. I would remind myself of what God told me and believe it to be true. One of the things that really helped our relationship was communication. I mean, a primary part of our, our relationship and our foundation was that we communicated so much on MySpace. I said it right this time. MySpace in the early days. We, we text, we emailed, that sort of thing. So whenever I was deployed, it was just kind of an extension of that. I deployed in the time where you had phone calls, and you had emails and you had a little bit of messenger. The guys these days, they can like Facebook live and video chat and all of that stuff. We didn't have those things. Mm -hmm. And there would be huge, in our location, there would be huge gaps in between the times that we would get to communicate and correspond with one another. But I think we grew in those times. We opened up, we shared our hearts and we were fortunate enough to have two weeks of, oh my goodness, you are incredible. I can't wait to see you touch you, that whole thing. And then a, a solid break. break where that isn't a factor any longer. You can take a picture, maybe, and email it. Say, look, here's me in the desert. 
Don't I look sexy sweating beside my C-130? Yeah, it was my so C-130. weird because we're like, we meet and we really like each other yeah. and we fall in love and fall in love and fall in love and we just want to be near each other all the time. And then he's gone. I feel like God used that time to slow us down, to really slow the pace where it wouldn't get out of control because we, we, we did have trouble. We couldn't keep our hands off each other in the first couple of weeks, full disclosure. Hey mom, how are you? Full <laughs> disclosure, it was tough. It was tough, but he gave us a solid break to connect on a deeper level, to communicate with one another, to learn the just the foundational stuff of, I'm, I'm struggling with being apart from you. I'm struggling with my peers. I'm struggling with work. I'm struggling with discouragement. And having the other person praying for you or communicating back to you that, that they're with you and they support you and that I see you in your weakness. I see what you struggle with. Those types of things. I think God really strengthened our relationship mm -hmm. through communication. We started our relationship on MySpace. We talked for three months, emailed on MySpace for three months. And then we only dated for two weeks. And then he deployed for four months. So the yep. first seven months of our relationship was just emails. Yeah. It was crazy. And my mom was always like, how can you know, how can you be in love with someone that you've really never seen? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I <laughs> just am. We got to go deeper. We got to really communicate what, what truly matters to our heart rather than just the physical connection. Mm -hmm. Physical connection was there. I mean, I'm hot. Let's just not get around it. I'm hot. She's smoking hot. Mm -hmm. We, that's there, that's there, but just going deeper in what our values are, what we truly believe in, what we want to do with kids and family marriage structure, and family. marriage, and jobs, long-term religion. We got to talk about everything. everything. We really spilled our you know, deepest, darkest yeah. secrets, our biggest fears, our biggest hopes, our biggest dreams, and we shared them with each other, and it really laid a solid foundation for our relationship. When he came home, I didn't care if I, I had school that day, I didn't care what was going on, I was going to be there. Yeah. I went with his parents and I was so nervous, but there was that awkwardness mm. of like, I, we hadn't seen each other in four months and before that we'd only dated for two weeks, so it was like, is he going to feel the same way that he, that he was saying in the emails yep. or is he putting on, is this all a lie, like is this for real? Yep. And when he showed up. I was standing with his mom and his stepdad. He walked up to me and he scooped me up in this bear hug that just, my heart swelled. And I mean, he came right for me. I was so like touched because his mom and his stepdad were there and I was like, he can, you know, hug his mom first because it's his mom. He came right for me and scooped me up and gave me a hug and I was just like, sorry mom. This is real. It's still, it's real. It's not just emails, it's not just fake. Yeah. It's real. For anybody who's deployed or been a family member of somebody who's been deployed, it's really tough when the, the soldier gets back. They've been in a, a mode, their face, their emotions are calloused, it's yeah. work mode kind of a thing. And when you get back home, it's, hey, how are you? You can't fully express mm -hmm. how you're feeling. But that wasn't the case this time. Whenever I got home, I saw her and I just wanted to scoop her up. I just wanted to hold her forever and that's super cheesy. We were so used to emailing that it was like, how do we speak to each other? This is kind of weird. And do yeah. we kiss or do we wait? We kiss. We kiss. That's what we <laughs> right there in front of you no. mom that deployment was the first deployment where I actually had a support structure where I knew that my heart was being safely cared for I, I, I cared for somebody they cared for me back and whenever I would go on a flight I knew I knew that they missed me I knew that they they were concerned about me whenever I got back and I would I would say I'm home I'm safe and I she would just respond and say, I'm so excited. I'm so excited no matter what time of the day or night. It wasn't like you had to wait another day and a half for her to get back to you. She was immediately back to you. And it was, what was fun was I knew that that meant she was either pulling herself out of a math class or waking up in the middle of the night. It didn't matter. It was just the, the commitment to say, I'm here for you through thick and thin. And then on my end to say, no matter where I am in the world, I'm, I will find you. I'm, I'm going to get to you. I will get a message to you somehow because I'm thinking about you. It was just something that, a connection that I hadn't experienced where God had us take a break and communicate and just really focus in on that area of our relationship and just the connectedness for me was huge. That was a big marker in my life for my relationship with God. Whenever we left, we were madly in love. Being gone on that deployment, I knew that our relationship would last forever. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was solid in my mind that she was the one. And I think whenever I came home 
and saw her through the crowd and beelined to her and scooped her up. I, I think in that moment I was saying that you're the one. So, Together forever. forever. <laughs> so sometimes deployments and separation can be a good thing. God can use it to really increase the strength and yeah. depth of your relationship. So be encouraged through our experience. We love you guys. Love you. We'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Yeah. 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 Seven o'clock yeah. on the dot. I'm in the drop top. Who's in the streets? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I got, got a real pretty, pretty, pretty little thing. thing. Wait, wait. I pulled up anticipating good love. Don't, don't keep me waiting. I got plans, plans, plans to put my hands in my hand. S H E R A Y M O N D. And baby, tell me what you want to do. What the heck, 90s artist? That was so inappropriate for me to know that. I have no idea why this is a part of like the mental process. I mean, every word of that song. We know it all. Is in here. Burned into my Seriously, mind. Seriously, I was like 14 singing that song. Burned in there. I don't think there. I knew what that meant. Usher. Come mm -hmm. on, bro.